YXBA is back, and I'm ready to mash some more buttons. In today's video, I want to talk about how this may very well be the last bad year in Nintendo console history. Let's face it, almost every year is a good year in terms of first party content on a Nintendo console. But every once in a while, and typically it happens when Nintendo is transitioning from one console to another, we end up with a real blue shell of a year. Thankfully, Nintendo has talked at length about having found a way to avoid gaming droughts in the future, and this is real music to my ears as a Nintendo fan. While Nintendo has yet to share complete details on how they are going to pull this off, we have plenty of reason to believe that the main solution will be for them to enable their handheld and console developers to make games across both platforms simultaneously. And while it all sounds good in theory, I started asking myself what would a bad year potentially look like under this new strategy. And due to the power of looking things up on the internet, I was able to put together a list of some of Nintendo's worst years in terms of first party uh, content and first party output. And I want to take a look here at what it could have been if you combined the handheld and the console software in any of those years. Let's go way back to 2001. And, you know, I imagine for some of you, you may not even have been born yet. In my case, I was already starting to become an old man. Um, this was a year when Nintendo 64 was on the way out and the Nintendo GameCube was on the way in. We got some decent releases on the N64 in the final year of its life, including Dr. Mario 64, Conker's Bad Fur Day, which is probably my personal favorite of that year, Mario Party 3, and Paper Mario. These are some pretty good releases to be sure, but come on, we could have done a lot better than that if Nintendo had unified the platforms back then. Now imagine for a second if you would have also had Advance Wars, uh, F-Zero Maximum Velocity, Golden Sun, and Mario Kart Super Circuit to play on your N64 as well. It wouldn't have gone down as the greatest year ever, but it would certainly have been nothing to complain about on a console that was on its way out. So let's jump forward to 2006, which was another pretty bad year. This was a year in which the Wii was about to become the next big thing in gaming. There was actually a lot of excitement and hype for the Wii that year, and that was basically all that was there to, to give Nintendo fans that warm uh, feeling because the actual games to play that year was uh, pretty pathetic, and it kind of reminds me of the Wii U's final year. The GameCube had several decent first party games. My personal faves were Button Koitos. Uh, I never quite knew how to pronounce it, but it was a great RPG and it came from actually uh, the developers of Xenoblade Chronicles. It was published by Nintendo at that time. Nintendo did not own Monolith yet, but I still consider it a first party game. The other big one was Twilight Princess, but I think most of us ended up playing it on the Wii system, so it didn't really help at all filling the gap before the new system came out, which is always where Nintendo has the most problems with uh, providing a steady flow of first party games. There was also a couple of quirky first party entries that year, including Chibi Robo and Odama, and if you don't know what Odama is, you should really check it out. It's a pretty quirky game. It was almost like a precursor to what Nintendo was planning on doing with the Wii, but in a little bit of a different way. You actually used a microphone to control all, all the characters on screen. It was a really quirky game. I unfortunately never got a chance to try it. I think it was actually pretty expensive, and it was also very hard to find. But the lineup of games tying Nintendo fans over until the Wii launches was rather disappointing. But it could have been a whole lot better with a unified 
approach to platforms. We could have got great games like Yoshi's Island DS, Kirby Squeak Squad, Mario and Donkey Kong 2 March of the Minis, Star Fox Command, Nintendo Dogs Dalmatian and Friends, New Super Mario Bros, Tetris DS, and Metroid Prime Hunters. I mean, that would have been a downright awesome year. It probably would have been the best year on the GameCube, uh, period. Um, so, you know, as you can see, these years are pretty dry years. These weren't the best years at all. But when you potentially combine the games onto one platform that Nintendo is making for their handheld and their console, you're going to find that Nintendo is going to have an amazing lineup of games every single year. So let's keep going here and let's jump forward to the launch year for the Wii U, which was in 2012. The Wii had long since peaked, and once it peaked, it just fell so fast in terms of sales, and I think Nintendo kind of had to rush out, actually, the Wii U, because uh, they just weren't expecting the Wii to drop off so quickly. Wii fans were stuck playing the waiting game for the Wii U. In my opinion, we did not have nearly the same level of excitement as we had for the Wii. The Wii U's launch event was kind of so-so in my opinion. It showed some potential but it was just lacking the punch that the Wii system had where everybody was just excited about it and they had some really big first party games announced for it. So we didn't have too much of an excitement although I, I was excited to be getting Nintendo games going into HD pretty soon. But the, the games we got on the Wii that year were Xenoblade Chronicles, which actually had come out a long time ago in Japan, but we finally got it in the United States and Canada. Mario Party 9, Poke Park 2, Wonders Beyond, and Kirby's Dream Collection. That's not a real long list of first party games, but again, things could have been a whole lot better if they were using a combined approach to platforms, because the 3DS had some really good games that year. Super Paper Mario Sticker Star, despite some of the complaints that fans have with that game, it was a decent game and certainly would have been nice to have it on the Wii as well. New Super Mario Bros. 2, which was, you know, a lot of fun. It's not the best 2D Mario game you'll ever play, but it was fun collecting all those coins. Um, Mario Tennis Open, uh, came out for the 3DS that year, as well as Kid Icarus Uprising. Come to think of it, it would have been better off as a Wii game, and it wouldn't surprise me actually if that game had started as a Wii game and got moved over to the 3DS, because it just would have been so perfect with the uh, nunchuck to move Pit around and, uh, and the Wii remote for aiming. When you start combining the platforms into one, you just have a potential to have such a great, steady, flow of Nintendo games all the time. And honestly, I'm not a firm believer in this strategy, but if Nintendo did come out with $199 system, they may not even need third-party support. With their first-party and second-party partners, they could probably have 15 really high-quality exclusives every year. And that I'm talking about retail releases. That's on top of everything that would be going on with digital. It's not my favorite strategy, but Nintendo could definitely, in my opinion, survive with that strategy. And here we are in 2016, and it looks like history is really repeating itself again, but no matter what Nintendo ends up doing um, with their new console, I think that we will be receiving a lot more first-party titles in the future, and that is due, again, to the power of having a shared architecture where they can put every game onto both systems which is great because I know some Nintendo fans are more handheld fans some Nintendo fans are more console fans so it'd be nice to be able to just buy the one that you prefer if you like one or the other and be able to experience all of Nintendo's first party content and in my case I would be buying both of them and hoping that at least if I bought the games digitally there would be cross-platform play and cloud saves and things of that nature. So these are some of the examples here from actually Nintendo's worst years. That's the thing to keep in mind. These are Nintendo's worst years. Imagine what kind of a games lineup Nintendo could have on one of their best years. This has been Colin Unger 
reminding you to keep your thumbs glued to YXDA. And always remember to select start. If you enjoyed this video, click like and subscribe.